My name is Marcio Stembovski. I was born in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, 1959. My grandparents come from uh, Russia, for side of my father, for side of my mother, come from Poland. So that I have a Stembovski name, is a little different name for a Brazilian guy. And my father talks to some, some friends, if they recommend to go to Carson Gracie, that's the big name of it, that's the big reference of Jiu Jitsu in the world at that time. So my father told me to go to Carson Gracie, I go to Copacabana. I saw a guy, a uh, very young guy, uh, black belt, you know, very intensive eye, you know. And he asked me, hey, how are we doing here? I say, I want to see about the program. I want to make me enrollment here. And he, OK, and then he showed me all the gym. And that guy showed me the gym. His name is Hollis Gracie. Hi, I'm uh, Hollis Gracie from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I'm a fourth degree black belt. Basically, it's very important to, for people to understand how the, the martial arts started and got developed with my grandfather. Carlos Gracie, you know, he taught his brother, Elio, who taught their nephews and sons and, you know, grandsons. So, yeah, it's very important to, to understand, like, uh, how the sport in the, uh, was in the beginning, how it evolved, and, and all. People say there is a, a time in Jiu-Jitsu uh, before my father and after uh, my father. You know, they said uh, before Jiu-Jitsu was a little bit uh, more on the defensive part, you know, like you kind of like wear, uh, wear, uh, wear your opponent down, tire him out, and then eventually you, you survive, 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 and then you, until you're able to finish your opponent. Uh, my father put more the go after it mentality on a, on a, on a sport. He said, why am I going to keep fighting for one hour and a half if I can finish the guy in three minutes? So that was the a big transition and that, uh, that he put in, the, in Jiu Jitsu. He also liked to study a lot of different type of martial arts. So he was a, a innovator, a revolutionary of the sport. Yes, my father was a natural competitor. He loved to compete. He always tried to push himself to the, to the limit. Um, and back then, there wasn't too many Jiu Jitsu competitions around. And um, it was very common for him to rent a bus, put all his students in, and drive 24 hours, you know, on a bus to go compete in like different states and stuff. So that was the him. So he was always looking for competitions, and that wasn't just enough for him. He wanted to uh, compete in modalities that were similar to jiu-jitsu, like judo, like uh, sambo, like wrestling.
I'm Fabio Santos, was born in Rio, uh, friends with Marcio for 40 or 50 years. <laughs> and I met him at the Gracie Academy. Well, he was, he was a, you know, he was pretty much a guard guy. He pulled guard, but he wouldn't be in his guard for very long. He had unbelievable sweeps, and he has one, one specific sweep that he doesn't open the guard hardly. He just flips the guy with, with the closed knees like this. You know what I mean? When he opens the guard, he puts the guy's heel on his knees, and he, it's a specific sweep that he does because his body is so long. And for, it's almost impossible for you to stop it. You know, once he gets you in that position, it's almost impossible for you to stop. His game is, you know, on top, chokes, huge hands, unbelievably huge hands. On the bottom, wrist locks. I mean, he's a very dangerous person. <laughs> I can say that. But his game was uh, very destructive. Halls had his feet on the ground. You know what I mean? He was the most just, you know, the fair, the guy that was, you know, correct. So even Carlos Gracie and Elio Gracie would ask Halls if whatever situation was right or wrong or what we should do about this or that. So that gives you an idea how heavy his presence was missed not only by us, but, but, but by the family also, you know, it was like a void all of a sudden, you know. So um, that might give you an idea, you know, how, yeah. how much of a, a, you know, presence he was. And, you know, he, he, was, in no, he was innovations with, with him, you know what I mean? He would <laughs> grab some stuff from wrestling and grab some stuff from karate or flying whatever, and he would incorporate into his jiu-jitsu, you know, and he would teach us, you know. But always maintaining the fight situation, not ever bringing to a sport situation, you know what I mean? He always taught us the fight aspect of jiu-jitsu with the sport aspect along, but, you know what I mean, we always Train the self-defense, we always put gloves on, we always, you know, we looked at the fight aspect, not only the, like people do today. Today is just the sport aspect of jiu-jitsu. Hardly anybody put the gloves on and, and they go at it, you know. Or they do the blocking that we used to do pretty much three times a week. You know what I mean? We, we, if you train every day, you train blocking at, three, at least three, two or three times a week. Uh, my name is Pedro Sauer, and I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, born and raised there. And I've uh, been doing uh, jiu-jitsu with uh, Elio Gracie, was my first instructor since 1970s, like, so middle 70s, 74, 75. Uh, that's when I started the first time. And I've um, been doing jiu-jitsu since then, never stopping. You know, uh, Marcio was a very uh, good student uh, from Hall's Gracie. Well, uh, what I remember the most, uh, Marshall, uh, there was a, he had an incredible guard. I remember being in Marshall's guard. It was a place for nightmares. It was a, it was a place that you were gonna get swept. You know, he had a, such an incredible, incredible way to kind of arch. And, and well, apparently, still one of his signature moves. Anytime you're in his guard, he just pull you up and flip right up to the head, and end up right in the mount position. He done this over and over and over. He, that's what his bread and butter. And um, he was super talented, uh, very flexible. Uh, at the same time, he's a good personality guy. He was the kind of guy who was not a, aggressive. He was not a mean guy. We always uh, compete. We always train pretty hard, but with a lot of respect. Uh, he was a he was a very gentle guy. He wasn't for his body type. If he was a mean guy, he could be a killer. You know, really, literally hurting people very easily. But uh, he was such a talented guy, very technical. And in my opinion, he's one of the best uh, practitioners in Jiu-Jitsu at the time. The Jiu-Jitsu community was just tight. We, it was Carson Gray's team, it was Halls, and uh, people used to cross training all the time. It was not a, of course when we compete, it was a different, we compete against each other, and the hardest part of the competition was uh, competition in-house. It was to see who's gonna compete. That was pretty much the hardest. You know, the years that I trained Jiu-Jitsu in my life, I, I always give credit to Grandmaster Edu Gracie, 
and he always gave the credit to Carlos Grace, his older brother, who taught him everything. You know, of course, uh, uh, the jiu-jitsu spread from everywhere. But if you think well, and if you go back and you see who was putting on the line every day, who was every single day training, who was every day on the mat, who was every day practice, who was every day question. You know, you see who have the first who made the first uh, uh, federation, Jiu-Jitsu Federation, you see who come up with the belt system. You know, we cannot ignore the name of Elio Gracie being the guy. And uh, I remember the, you know, him on his late 80s, he was not a young guy, and he was there on the mat every, every night, every day. And anybody who come in, you know, we have, we have to put gloves on and go for it to protect the jiu-jitsu flag.